Hallelujah. Matthew, the 15th chapter, starting at verse number 21. When you have it, please say amen. amen. And the word of God reads from the New Living Translation. Then Jesus left Galilee and went north. <laughs> he went to the north side, dirty. <laughs> to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Now those words carry great significance because of time I won't mess with it. They're not just words in the Bible. Uh, I want to encourage y'all to make sure that when you come across a word, uh, look it up and find out what it consists of. This was not a good place. All right? Tyre and Sidon. Verse 22 says, a Gentile woman who lived there came to him, pleading, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. For my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. But Jesus gave her no reply, mm, mm, mm. not even a word. Then his disciples urged him to send her away. Be careful who you got around you. Tell her to go away, they said. Talking about the disciples. She is bothering us with all of her begging. Then Jesus said to the woman, I, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she came and worshiped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. In our verbiage, she wasn't trying to hear even what God had to say. I got a need. Uh, I don't care about all that. I got something I need you to do for me. Boy, I'm going somewhere, I promise you. Oh, my God, I feel the presence of the Lord up here, Christian. Oh, Jesus. Ah, oh, Lord, arrest every mind in this place today, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Verse 26 says, Jesus responded, it isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied, that's true, Lord. But even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. Dear woman, Jesus said to her, your faith mm, is great. It's going to take great faith in this hour. And your reward, because of your faith, is granted. Did y'all catch that, mothers? And her daughter was instantly healed because of her faith, because of her begging, because she wouldn't take no for an answer. Father God, we just thank you for your word. Speak by your spirit. Contain me. Move my flesh out of the way and let your spirit come forth. I need wisdom from heaven. Minister to your people. You told me, Father God, that if I feed them, you will send them. They have come. Now feed them. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want y'all to buckle up a little bit. Get your pen and paper out. If you need something to write with, just raise your hand and somebody will serve you in this embassy to make sure that you have everything you need to be effective when you leave up out of here. Again, if you need something to write with, just raise your hand. We have people that's in position ready to serve you. Does anybody in this room mm -hmm, have a need in your life? Let me see your hands. Uh -uh, I'm talking to the right crowd. I suspect that everyone under the sound of my voice has many needs. Mm -hmm. Some people are looking at devastating family problems this morning. Some are looking at financial difficulty this morning. Some are looking at a problem with a child uh, this morning. Am I talking to the right crowd so far? Some, of, some are looking at their own souls and realizing that they are lost this morning. Yeah? I could literally stand here all day long and not complete the list of problems that people are facing today, even on Mother's Day. Jesus is approached, church, by a mother who is in a desperate situation, like some of us this afternoon. I want you to know that there is hope for your situation 
today. I can't talk about tomorrow, but I can talk about today, Sister Amber. No matter what it is you think you need today, God, told me those things, Pastor, my keys. Keys, keys, keys. Just slang it to me, just slang it to me. No matter what you are facing today, get this image. The Bible says that God gives every joint error that's in right position with the Father keys to the kingdom. Amen. There's many doors in the kingdom. One key don't fit and unlock every door. That's why it says keys. God got a key and keys for somebody this afternoon. He holds the key, not me. Not my beautiful wife, God does, holds the key to unlock whatever need that you have this morning. Even though we come to celebrate the beautiful mothers like we have done, there's still many needs sitting under the sound of my voice this afternoon. So I'm going to title this sermon, Faith That Won't Quit. This sermon was birthed and Put together because when I begin to think about two women, as I stated earlier, my mother, Irene Starks, and also my grandmother, Callie West, they had a faith that would not quit. I also had to add to that, Pastor Champ, and God just dropped this on me, my God, my own wife of 30-some years, she had a faith when I was in my mess that wouldn't quit. Oh, my God. So I want to talk to some mothers this afternoon that got faith that won't quit. Mm. So point number one, let's get into this as I teach you. Let's look at this woman's petition. Because it's a very interesting story. Because she had to come through some things. She had to overcome some situations, my God. She had to do things, my God, that was against culture. Oh, my God, because she had a need. Can I tell you something this afternoon, my God? Who you never, never know how much faith you really got until you have a real need. Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, uh, this mother was dealing with her daughter. Mm, mm, mm. So she came needing something from Jesus. On behalf of someone else. Have you ever went to the Lord on behalf of somebody else? Uh, have you developed enough as a man, as a woman, my God, where you can go into the presence of the Lord and bombard heaven on behalf of someone else instead of always going just for you? Sooner or later, you'll know when you're growing and you're developing, my God. When you can go into your prayer closet, you can go into your bathtub, or go into your shower, or make your car an altar. And when you start interceding all the way from your house to your job, and you're interceding from somebody else other than yours. Oh, my God. That's when you know you're growing. That's when you know you just shifted, my God, from just worrying about your foe and no more. When you be concerned about the family that's connected to you. Oh, I know I'm talking to the right crowd. Oh, I feel good. Yes, Lord. So this lady had a petition, Minister Robert. Many of us go to the Lord every day with supplications, making known our requests. The Bible tells us to do that. So let's look at this. Let's look at the reason she came. Write this down. The reason she came. This woman came to Jesus because she was concerned about her daughter. Is anybody concerned about their daughter this afternoon? Yeah, 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 yeah. The child was demon-possessed and was probably acting out in violence and anger. Mm -hmm. She needed, my God, help in a desperate way. Oh, my God, if you want to see a mama act plump crazy, who let her child, or oh, be a son, grandchildren, whatever, let their child get in a desperate situation. I promise you, oh, my God, they'll become superwoman. I'm talking to somebody this afternoon, because I know what my mama's done. I ain't going to pull the trigger yet. Oh, my God. But this, 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 she needed God in a real desperate way because her daughter was troubled. Her daughter was vexed with a spirit, my God, that was causing major problems in her daughter's life. If you want to, my God, mamas, have you ever dealt with a, a child? Well, a child could break you down. Boy, a child will make you not want to get out of bed for three and four days at a time. Oh, my God, uh, uh, even when, my God, the child has turned on you, my God, it hurts you. Uh, I said even when the child has turned on the very one that birthed him, my God, that hurts you, my God. Some of us is hurting, my God, this afternoon. We're going to fix you today through Christ. Come on, somebody. But this woman had a desperate need. 
She went on behalf of her daughter. And she needed God's help in a real way. Some of you right now need God's help in a real way. Can I tell you what you used to doing? Ain't going to get it. The way you come in and out of the house of the Lord, ain't going to get it. The little five-minute devotions, my God, that you do at home to clear your fleshly conscience, ain't going to get it. You're going to have to go deeper, my God, until you got a real need. Oh, my God, until you got a real need, my God. Oh, until you got a real need, my God. When faith and need hit each other, bam, something got to happen. This woman had a need, my God, but it took faith to get the need met. Oh, my God, the word of God says the only thing that moves God is faith. Many of us are trying to get God to unlock doors, my God, but we're trying to do it by way of the flesh. My God, you got to have faith mixed with trust, my God, and God will move. Do you got real faith mixed with real trust? Do you just confess or do you really believe that God can do what he said or what you need him to do in your life? I'm going to say that again. Do you really believe? Not just confess that he can't do. You believe that he can do whatever it is that you need him to do. This woman, my God, needed God in a real way. Write this down up on the point number one. Let's look at the reason why this woman came crying. The word of God says she was crying. The word cry speaks of one crying out, shouting after another. Shouting after another. This woman was falling after Jesus and his disciples shouting to him, for the help she needed. Come here, Pastor Tedrick. God gave this to me in prayer. I'm going to follow you. And I want you to just walk. The woman of God, I'm the woman. She shouted, Jesus! Be quiet. Jesus! Everywhere Jesus and the disciples went, she's falling behind them. Jesus! Keep in mind, she's not screaming and looking like a, a, a fool yeah. on behalf of her. This is for somebody else. Yeah. Walks on Jesus. Mm. And they steady walking. She's falling behind the answer. Jesus. But the answer has not stopped. <laughs> Keep walking. Jesus. I can imagine in the flesh she wanted to quit. But she had a need and faith wouldn't let her quit. Jesus. She kept falling after the Lord. Shouting. See, some of y'all are too cute. Some of y'all men is too cool. And to do something like that, my God, I know I'm sitting up in there with a need. I know she's about to walk out on me. I know I'm about to lose everything. But I'll come to church to, 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 to soothe my flesh, my God. But I know I'm desperate. I know I need God to move in a real way. And so I'm going to sit in my seat and go through the motions and try to be cool and try to be cute, my God. But I want to talk to some people, my God, that's desperate, my God. That's willing to look like a fool, my God, to give God to see God move yeah, yeah, in your yeah. life. Some of you yes. think you are. Thank you, Lord. Oh, this woman followed behind Jesus. And we'll make it so bad she wasn't even supposed to be, according to custom, my God, even in the vicinity of God. All that didn't matter. I tell you, when you got a need and you mix faith with a need, you don't care about nothing that got to do with society. You don't care about no Jewish culture. You don't care about no tradition. I'm coming on behalf of my daughter. And I need you to fix it. And I refuse to take no for an answer. I want to talk to some real mamas today. Mm. This woman, my God, was so heartbreaking, heart heartbroken over the condition of her child. And she was determined to get her child the help she needed. She was taking a chance. She was so determined, Sharon, to get help for her daughter. Oh, my God. That's the reason why she cried. Don't you know mamas, daddies, aunties, grandmas, and uncles? It's one thing. In life that I know that'll make you cry, that is your children. We men, we can get puffed up and we can stand up like a soldier, my God, and do a, and do a whole lot, dirty dad. But when them children, when the enemy has got a hold to our son and daughter, when, when sickness has afflicted one of our sons or one of our daughters, my God, when some form of addiction has afflicted, my God, your son or your daughter, my God, when you're begging God, when you're crying out to the Lord, when you're desperate for God and God ain't moving, what do you do when he don't even answer you? The Bible says, Abraham, in hope, against all hope, yet in hope, believe God. What do you do when you're going to God in prayer, making known your supplications, you're praying like we're doing for our babies, my God, and, and God ain't answering? Yeah. What do you do? Do you quit? Do you just come into the house of the Lord and sit and be cute and pretty? Uh, come on now. 
Or do you do like this woman and say, you know what? I'm falling behind the answer. See, what you got to understand about the story, she was following the answer. Oh, my God, many of you, my God, because you don't want to come out your familiar, my God, the answer is right there beside you. You just don't know it. Or the answer may be right in front of you. That's why you got to get up, my God, and get out your seat and come down, my God, and step in the pool of healing so that you can get your answer. See, sometimes God ain't going to move right there. He can move in your seat, but sometimes you got to say, God, I'm willing to do whatever because I need the answer. So I'm willing to come right down here and call on the name of Jesus. I'm willing to get on my face. I'm willing to do whatever. See, some of you ain't got to that point yet where you're willing to do whatever. For your children, as well as even for your marriage, as well as for your finances, and even as well as for you. This woman cried. Yes, Lord, we're going to teach it, and we're going to shout at the end. Because she had a need. Mm, mm, mm. This woman was determined. Is anybody determined? Is anybody determined to see their kids free? My God. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh, my God. Let's look at this third thing. Let's look at the reason why this woman called on Jesus. In, in, in recording this same event, Mark, the Gospel of Mark tells us in Mark 7, 25, that this woman had heard about him. Mm. Ah. Perhaps she had heard about him on how Jesus had healed all manner according to the scripture of diseases. She may have heard about how he had opened up the eyes of the blind, unstopped the ears of the deaf, about how he had driven the demons from other people. This woman came to Jesus because she needed something that no one else can do for her. I want to say a lot right there. Some of you got to come to the Lord today. Some of you are going places, thank you, Holy Ghost, and to people and to things, looking for that people, places, or things to do something that only God can do for you. There's an internal joy, an internal peace that all human beings are searching and looking for. You'll never find it in the world system. Everything as I stand before you today, my God, that you need, to be successful in society is connected to that constitution, which is the word of God. Be it what you will in your mind and what you may think about this book, I promise you, this book has so much power. Mm. My God, it can literally change the whole course of your life. I don't care what direction you may be headed. I don't care what hangups you may deal with. I don't care how bad your situation is. I promise you, when you get off into this word and begin to implement and apply these principles that's in this word, my God, to your situation, I promise you, God will begin to methodically change your life. There is nothing too hard for God. There is nothing, ladies and gentlemen, that God can't do for you. There is nothing that God can't fix. There is nothing that God can't restore. There is nothing that God can't heal. I don't care how bad the situation is. This Canaanite woman came to God because her daughter was possessed. That means she was overtaken by a demon. And the demon had full control. Oh, but when she got to the answer. I'm trying to get some of y'all to the answer. Ain't you tired yet? <laughs> Ain't you tired of going from to and fro? <laughs> Ain't you tired of putting your faith and trust in people and they steady letting you down? Ain't you tired of putting your faith and trust in a man that ain't, who always lets you down, my God? He said, I ain't going to do it to you like this no more. I ain't going to hurt you no more. I ain't going to cheat on you no more. I ain't going to do it, but you're constantly taking him back and he's constantly hating you, hurting you. That's because you're putting your trust in flesh and not in the spirit. You're trusting in flesh and not in spirit. You're looking to people to do something that only God can do. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking to some mothers and some, yeah, yeah. some men up in this church today. Ain't you tired? He has the answer. He is the key. Jesus, the author of life, the true deliverer, the only one that can heal you from the crown of your head to the very soles of your feet. Oh, my God, if you get off in this word, you'll find out how real this word is. This Bible will literally change everything about you. You can go from a caterpillar to a butterfly. When they look at you, they don't have no resemblance of your former life. Ain't no residue. <laughs> Ain't no residue, Marco. No. They'll never know I lived this thing that I lived if I didn't tell them. They'll never know I was sleeping in an abandoned car, selling my clothes for crack cocaine. They'll never know I was living in, oh, my God, uh, 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 condemned homes. Unless I just told you. Complete transformation. But I had a need. I had a need. And I had faith that would not be denied. That I learned from my mama and my grandmother. Who said, Jew, you can do it. Jew, I ain't giving up on you. Jew, I'm going to keep praying for you. 
Oh my God, ba baby, you better than that. Mama believe in you. My, I'm, boy, don't get me started. I'm trying to talk to somebody. Oh my God, do you got a real need, my God, that you need to get to Jesus today so that he can heal you? The answer is in the house. Do you want it? Well, you come get it. Are you possessed? Are you oppressed? Are you depressed in your mind? Is you troubled at night when you can't get no restful sleep? God is talking to you. Sometimes God will stir up stuff because he's trying to get your attention. Some of us is dead spiritually, so God will send a trial to awaken you. Oh, my God. So you can get back in position because he loved you and I so much that he don't want to see you die and perish. My God, I want to talk to some people, my God, that got some real faith that won't quit. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Mm. This woman needed God in a real way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Perhaps you are dealing with this afternoon a child that is out of control. Perhaps, oh my God, perhaps you, you are at your wit's end over some situation in your life and you need help. Yeah, God is talking. Maybe you need salvation. Maybe what you need is restoration. Some of you need restoration between you and your mama. Right now. Restoration between siblings. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Some of us need to let go of our former wives and former husbands. We got children and family by the former, but yet we don't even talk. Just put, put them out there on the, on the porch and send them out when I pull up. But we're sitting in different churches. I don't want to talk to you. Just send them out. I won't have nothing to do with your bitterness. But we go to church and... I'm being serious, man. God sees that. I don't want to talk to her. I don't want to have nothing to do with him. But you'll come to church and act like my God. Send them out. Send them out. Put them on the sidewalk. I'll pick them up. I don't want to have nothing to do. I can't even stand and look at you. You make me sick. But then I go to church on Sunday and give God some glory. Are you really giving God some glory? Because the Bible says your worship can be in vain. Oh, I, I'm still in Mother's Day. I'm going to pick you up, but I got to get here. Make sure you get free today, too, though. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, somebody. You may stand in need this afternoon of forgiveness. Your need may not be that you have a demon-possessed child, but you need to forgive yourself. You need to forgive somebody in the flesh. You need to let go of some situations and circumstances that you brought into the house on Mother's Day. God stand needs and stand ready to help you. Mm. Whatever your need is in life, my God, today, God, get that need to Jesus. Write that down. I'm going to say that right there. Get your need or whatever you need to God. Get it to God today. Whatever you need from God, get it to God today. Regardless of what you're facing in life, the answer will be found in him. Trust me. And I don't want to get into my testimony. I'm going to leave that alone. But the answer to whatever you need is in God. It ain't in man, it ain't in woman, it ain't in money, it ain't in 401k, it ain't in President Trump. I promise you, it ain't in your wife, some of it may be, it ain't in your husband, some of it may be. But the real need is in God. That which you are lacking, that hole and that void, thank you, Holy Ghost, that you are feeling right now, it can only be filled by God. You can have a million dollars sitting in the bank. You can have your 20-inch rims and your gold teeth, and you'll still be unfulfilled. Because there's a certain place that God created just for you. I mean, just for him. Y'all stay with me. There's a certain place that God created inside of your temple, my God, that's solely for him. That's why he said the kingdom of heaven is within. Within everything you need, ladies and gentlemen, all you got to do is find the right key that I just showed y'all and unlock that which you need from God. Because it lives within. It's just laying dormant. And you need somebody to come breathe on you to unlock or awake. That's why it's so important to be connected. That's why it's so important to be connected. That's why it's so important to be connected because God will connect you with people that have a key to unlock the very thing you need God for. Some of you are desperate. You're going everywhere but to the answer. You're desperate for a lot of things. You need God to move, but you're searching everywhere. I know they legalize weed. So what? See, if I say going to the bar ain't going to solve it. Sleeping with more women ain't going to solve it. Avoiding your problems ain't going to solve it. Whatever you don't confront won't change. See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore, we going all around. 
Look what's sitting on the table, baby. Look what's sitting on the table, Naila. Look what's sitting on the table, Alicia. Right there. We're going all around. My God. Oh, my God, the answer. We don't want to pick up the answer. We don't want to stop long enough, my God, to pick up the answer. We don't want to go to the solution. We don't want to go to the healer. We go all around the answer. And we wonder why we in the wilderness for 40 years going around and around the answer. I promise you, if I had time, this is the answer. And this woman, my God, this Canaanite woman, my God, understood that Jesus is the answer. That's why she refused to take no pleasure, because she understood that the answer is right there in front of me. Is the answer in front of you? Have God already spoken? Yes, he has. What you going to do with it? What you going to do with it? This is Mother's Day. Are you going around? The answer. Are you looking everywhere but to the answer? In the beginning was the word. Before there was a who, what, when, and where, it was the word. In the beginning was this. The Bible said with earth, my God, is destroyed and burnt up. The only thing going to be left is this. As I taught my church, my God, how is it that the word of God is going to escape fire? He said he's going to burn up everything, everything on earth that we put our hope and faith in will be destroyed. He said the only thing that's going to make it is the word. <laughs> but we doing this. We being pulled to everything that ain't going to matter when he decided to end this thing. The answer is right there. This woman, the Canaanite woman, understood. I've exhausted all of my resources. I ain't got no more cheese. I ain't got no more praying. I'm going straight to the answer. I don't need to talk to nobody. I ain't set up no meeting with the first lady. I ain't set no meeting with a pastor. I ain't doing nothing. I'm going straight to the source. Some of you, you my God, you're trying to get to people, my God, but you need to get to the source. God is your source. He said, I'm the vine and you are the branches, my God. Any branch, branch that disconnect from me, they said, the Bible said they shall surely die. My God, God is your source. God is your, your sustainer. God is your wheel in the middle of a wheel. God is your way maker. God is your rock. Number two, let's look at this lady's persistence. Oh, my God, when you're trying to get a healing, when you're trying to get God's will, <laughs> when, you find the, when you're trying to find the pulse of God, uh, you got to be persistent. Uh, you got to have that mindset like this pastor right here. It ain't no shadow of turning. Ain't no shadow of turn. I'm going on to see what the end of a saved life is going to be like. Through trials and tribulations, through attacks and misunderstandings and everything that you and I got to walk through. My mind is made up. It's going to take a made up mind to truly hear job well done. It's going to take a made up mind to come through the fire. It's going to take a made up mind when you're thrown in the lion's den, my God, to cause the lion's the mouth to be shut, my God. Do you have your mind fixed that no matter what comes your way, I'm going on. I'm determined to see what the end of a saved life is going to be like. she got to be like the woman with the issue of blood. Uh, she too, my God, was supposed to be on the outside because you couldn't be in the presence, my God, when you was, when you was dripping. Come on, somebody, I'm going to leave it at that. So that didn't matter. She had used up everything. She has dropped, uh, she, she has exhausted everything. Tiki, my God, but she said, I got to get healed. I'm tired of walking around with this sickness, my God. I'm willing to do whatever it takes, my God. Oh, my God, am I talking to anybody that's willing to do whatever it takes, my God. Do I got some people in here that got some faith, Pastor Champ, that won't quit, my God. When every obstacle come your way, when every situation tell you it ain't going to happen, when the doubt come up in your mind, you cast it down. I want to talk to some people yeah. that got some faith, Shay, that won't quit. You're going to have that faith in this hour, I promise you. You might not be here today, but I promise you something. Keep living. You're going to need some faith that won't quit. And this message, I pray that the Spirit of God bring back to your memory because you're going to encounter some things if you're not already dealing with them where it's going to require faith, Brandon, that won't quit. Yeah. Oh, my God, when you believe, you don't get to quit. When you love God and you're grateful and you're thankful, ha, you don't quit. Uh, you just recharge. <laughs> oh, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. You don't quit. You just come off the battlefield and go and recharge. You may get tired a little bit, but you go back and recharge. You don't quit on God. You don't sit down on God. You continue on. Do I got any persistent believers in this place? The woman comes to Jesus for help, and when she doesn't get the response, watch this church, she imagines... She stays after Jesus until she gets what she wants. How many times? I preached a sermon years ago called my title, Don't Hang Up If You Don't Answer. 
might need to bring that back. Yep. This woman is after God. She's after the answer, and the answer is not answering. Ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I said she's after the answer, and the answer is not answering. But she stayed persistent. You know why? Because she had a need. See, some of you, my God, ain't going to be persistent. <laughs> some of you ain't going to push through because you ain't got a strong enough need yet. You may tell yourself you got a need, but when you really understand you got a need, when you really get sick and tired of being sick and tired, when you really get tired, <laughs> you're going to roll away the repost, baby, and you're going to get to God. Oh, my God, when you really want to get to God, you'll get to God. You don't care what nobody got to say. You don't care what your home. You don't know who. You don't care who you're going to lose along the way. You don't care who's going to talk about you when you do it. Oh, my God. Come on, Stephen. You don't make no difference. My God, I got a need. My God, I'm tired. And I got to get to Jesus. Mm. Some of you mamas can relate because you had to have faith that wouldn't quit. It's got hard on some of you mamas, and it's been hard, real hard. Some of it is God sent, but some of it is self-inflicted. But at the end of the day, you still had a faith that did not quit. And look at you today. Through it all, you have come through the fire. Oh, my God, you have withstood. The Bible says, my God, those that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. You're going to have to endure trials and tribulations, baby. Paul said all those that desire to live godly shall suffer persecution. This is a suffering way, Brandon. You're going to go through things in life. The Word of God warns you that if you have a desire to live godly, you shall, that's a promise, church, suffer persecution, my God. But blessed is the man who suffer persecution for righteousness. Say, when you're going through stuff because you're standing for Christ, God, I got it all worked out, baby. But you got to have a faith that won't quit in this hour. Oh, my God. You need to say, God, increase my faith so I don't quit. Many of you have quit on God. Yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't quit on your relationship. You didn't quit on your kids. You have quit. Pick it back up. Pick it back up. If God gave you breath, pick it back up. Pick your faith back up. Pick your hope back up. Pick your strength back up. Oh, my God. Who am I talking to? Don't quit. Pick it back up. And run again. Mama said, I don't want to come back. But she had to pick her faith back up. She had to pick her love back up. Oh, my God. Pick it back up, Felicia. Pick it up. Some of y'all need to pick it up. You didn't put it down. You didn't get so discouraged. You have turned against God instead of to God. You don't even want to pray no more because you feel like, I didn't pray. I didn't fast. I didn't gave. He ain't answering. God come after you today because this woman had the same situation, but she didn't quit. Some of you didn't quit. Don't quit. I come to encourage you. Don't quit. She didn't. She didn't. She followed behind them shouting, Jesus, you got to break bread. I need mine. Straight up. Let's look at some obstacles that the woman of God had to encounter for her daughter. Number one, she had obstacles against her faith. Write that down. Faith is always challenged. Minister Lanny, our master teacher over her, said faith ain't faith until it's tested faith. Woo. Well, if you say you got faith, you better be ready to be tested. <laughs> oh, my God. If you say you got faith, real faith, faith that won't quit, here come the test. I, 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 there's no way else I can tell you. Uh, if you got real faith and you tell yourself, I got faith starting today that won't quit, here come the test. See, I, I, I don't want you weak and feeble. I'm preparing you. Get ready for war. If you say you standing for God, you say you down for Christ, get ready because here come the enemy and every assault that he can throw at you. Faith ain't faith until it's tested faith. Oh, my God, but it takes faith to outlast trials. It takes real faith to outlast situations. It takes real faith to outlast financial crisis. My God, faith is the only thing that moves God. When this woman came with her faith, she got God's attention. Even though she went against all of the Jewish customs and traditions, uh, uh, Christian, that didn't get his attention. Even though she was falling behind them, shouting, that didn't get his attention. See, some of us is doing things and we think that's getting his attention, but it ain't. Uh, the reason why he didn't answer, I'm going to tell you. How many of y'all want to know why God didn't answer? Okay. Yes. Is God helping anybody so far? I said, is God helping anybody so far? Yes, Lord. Uh, obstacles to her faith, see? To see that her need was met and her daughter was healed, this woman had to overcome many obstacles, just like you and I, mothers. It seemed that she met resistance at her request at every turn. Yet she persisted until she achieved her goal. She persisted until she achieved her goal. She faced many obstacles according to the scripture. Jesus didn't answer. The disciples said, go on, woman. Oh, I got to use this. Go on, woman. The disciples. 
Go on, woman. You bothering us. But they don't know on the other side. Oh, God, it's so good. On the other side, see, go on, woman. But my daughter who's sitting behind her mama, ooh, look how God put that together. But she don't know. You can't tell me to go because I'm coming on behalf of that one sitting behind me. Yeah. Yeah. Tiffany, come on, Tiffany, come on. Uh, uh, what time you done married? Good job. Y'all better come on. You can't, I, 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 ain't go, I, I ain't going away that easy. I said I'm not going away that easy because I'm coming on behalf of this one that's behind me. I'm standing for this one that's behind me. Is anybody standing for their children? Hey, somebody give God. Mm. So, 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 all that you talking about, it ain't about me. See, if it was about me, I would have went. I would have left. <laughs> if it was about me, I might have would have heeded and walked on the way. But this ain't about me. This is about Bree. This is about your kid. This is about your grandkid. This is about Marco. This is about your children. This is about Juju. This is about Michael. Ah, my God, this ain't about me, so I won't quit. Do you got enough in you, my God, to stand for somebody else? Oh, my God, thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, if it would have been about me, I might have would have quit. <laughs> oh my God, if it weren't for me, if it had been for my uncle or somebody else, I might have would have quit. I might even would have quit if it had been for my husband. But this is about my baby. Who am I talking to in the church, baby? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So she had some obstacles. But because she was persistent, oh my God, because she was persistent, and because she knew that he had the answer, my God, she refused to quit. See, you got to know that he has the answer to your addiction. He has the answer to your mental problems. He has the answer to your physical problems. He has the answer to your financial problems. See, you got to know. You know the problem is you come to church, but you ain't getting to the God that died for the church. Because you can't get to Jesus. Don't get me started. You and I cannot encounter God and not something not change. There's no way possible you could come in the presence of the Lord and that which you come to Jesus for, it don't change. You can't come in the presence of a holy God and something not change or die. Well, many people are coming to church, my God. They're not getting what they need because tradition is standing in the way of them getting what they need. Oh, my God. I want you to know I can't do it for you, but God can. My wife can't do it for you, but God can. When you come to go on for Christ church, you're coming to meet Jesus. You're not coming to the church. You're coming to meet the Father who died for the church. I need somebody to stand on your feet and give Jesus, my God, a hand. Oh, my God. Ooh. Ain't no more she can Let's go a little deeper. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want no vain glory. I don't want nothing. I can't do nothing for you, but encourage you and pray for you. My God, look at what she had to overcome, though. Write this down. She had to overcome race. Yeah, she had to come race, overcome race, like many of you have. Verse 21 tells us that this woman was from Tyria Sidon, as I told y'all in the reading. That was a wicked place, y'all. According to verse 22, it adds that she was a Canaanite. They say Canaanites was a black person. That's what the books say. My, well, that's what they say when you study out. Canaanite people were black, dark people. We read it, my God, my God. This tells us two things about this mother. First, she was a descendant from a cursed people because anybody that was not a Gentile, I mean, a Jew was considered a Gentile. A Gentile was anybody that wasn't a Jew. I'm going to say it again. So therefore, she was already cursed. That's why Christ said, I didn't come to you. I came to the children of Israel. See what I'm trying to say? So first of all, she was already out of order according to man's tradition. Stay with me, y'all. I'm going to lose you. My God, she was already out of order. She is already disqualified in the natural. She was already disqualified in the natural because of her tradition. But at this time, I got a need. This ain't about me. It's about my baby. I might have would have submitted, my God, and surrendered to the tradition and the culture. But this ain't about me. <laughs> this is about my baby. Are y'all with me so far? And so she was willing to walk past all that. She was willing to deal with the race card. Come on, somebody, like some of you have had to overcome. Mm. Uh, for, she was a descendant of a cursed people because the Canaanites were considered cursed. They were supposed to have been destroyed. Uh, Joshua got to come on back and kill them again. Come on, somebody, read your Bible, read your Bible. She was also uh, from a region known as re for, for, for vile religious practices. Sidon and Tyre was known for vile religious practices. So she was already disqualified, what I'm trying to say, in the natural. According to Jewish custom and tradition, she wasn't supposed to be nowhere around. And Jesus, my God, even said, I didn't come to deal with y'all. Yeah, God said that? Yeah, that's why you better thank God. I'm still in the spirit for Jesus. 
who put on flesh, came down from heaven, and made a way for us to be able to have a relationship with Christ. Because according to Jewish culture, as well as the scripture, he didn't fool with anything. God said, I come to redeem mankind. At first, it was just dealing with the Israelites, the chosen race. Thank God that we've been grafted in. Read the book of Galatians. Oh, my God. Somebody give Jesus a hand. Somebody give Jesus a hand, man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So she had to deal with race. Let's look at this. Also, write it down. She had to deal with religion. She came to Jesus and called out to him and said, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. And the beauty about this, Sharon, you're like this. She said, O Lord, son of David. See, she was a Canaanite. <laughs> she was a, from a cursed tribe, my God. But she understood who she was dealing with and what she was dealing with. She said, O Lord, capital L-O-R-D, Lord. Ah, even though I'm a, from a cursed people, this ain't about me. This is about my daughter. This ain't about me. This is about my niece. This ain't about me, oh Lord. Do you understand? Her making that declaration, look at me, Pastor. Oh Lord, son of David. She gave total honor. She understood his lordship. She understood Orlando, his kingship. And she was from a cursed people. Why is it that you got people that's unsaved, that's not even confessing Christ, have more reverence? That's right. They don't even confess Christ, but they have more reverence. My God, you know, people that don't even go to church, don't even believe, my God, don't even confess Christ, but they pay tithes. People in the, in, in the secular world, they pay tithes. Uh, you got people, my God, that don't even confess Jesus, their Lord and Savior. It's just certain things they won't even do. And they're not even saved people. They just won't do out of respect for, they quote, God. But we in the church and we do anything with no reverence for God. So you can look down on this woman if you want to. Because she was from a cursed people, my God. But at the end of the day, she had enough reverence for God. She said, oh, oh Lord. Oh, Lord, I'm trying to help that. Oh, Lord, son of David. Where is he at for his lordship in your life? Who's sitting on the throne of your mind right now with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Who's really Lord in your life right now? Who's really Savior in your life right now? Where is God at, my God, sitting in your mind right now? What are you going to do when you leave the church at 1 o'clock? Yeah. Where are you going to go? What are you going to drink? What are you going to smoke? Who are you going to lay up with? Where is Lord at in your life, church? Oh, I know y'all don't like it. Hey, mamas, come on, give God a hand. Come on, mamas, and give God a hand. Oh, my God. Uh. But she understood his lordship. She understood his lordship. Mm -hmm. And I give God the glory for that. Let's look at this third thing as I move. She had to also overcome rejection. If anybody ever dealt with rejection, come on, let me see your hand. Make a declaration because God going to deliver you today. Some of you are still dealing with the spirit of rejection right now. But this woman, because she had her mind made up, because she had faith that wouldn't quit, and it wasn't about her state, she was about her daughter. So she was willing to overcome race. She was over, willing to overcome rejection to get the need met by her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Her words appeared harsh. God's words appeared harsh. His words probably broke her heart. First, he simply ignores her and turns a deaf ear to her cries. Now, listen to this. When she persists, Jesus tells her, my God, that she does not deserve the children's bread. Some of us are looking at uh, some of us are looking at some of the same barriers today. You feel like giving up, but let me encourage you today. God's silence, watch this, is not an indication of God's unwillingness to meet your need. God's silence is a test of your faith. Yeah. Only a few people caught that. He's being quiet because he's trying to test your faith. How bad do you want it? Thank you, whoever you are. Thank you. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want to see what you're asking God for? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it, Dinesha? How bad do you want it, Shep? How bad do you want it, Michelle? How bad do you want it? Put some emphasis on it. I want it all, God. Give me everything that I'm desperate for you. I don't cover nobody thing. Yeah, I preach hard. Yeah, I shout to God because I'm desperate to hear a job well done, my good and faithful servant. How bad do you want your need, man? Oh, some of y'all still too cool. Let me get 10 women that stood up and give me some God, some glory in the house of the Lord today. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Hey! Hey! Oh, my God. Y'all don't say nothing when T.D. Jake shout. Hey! Hey! Oh, my God. Hey! Hey! That's for my son. Hey! Hey! That's for my niece. Why can't y'all say I'm radical? Y'all don't say TVJ's radical. What are you doing? Yes, Lord. Thank you. 
All of a sudden, Pastor too radical. T.D. Jake shout the same way. Hey! I'm desperate. I said I'm desperate, Dodie Dads. I got loved ones. I got people in my family still ain't saved. Even though they've seen God change my life. They still ain't saved. They still ain't making him Lord and Savior. Hey, I got to go hard for my family. I got to go hard for my loved one. Hey, hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's why I'm free. Because I'm willing to look like a fool for Christ. I don't care what you think. I'm almost still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God's silence is a test of faith. Y'all sit on down. I'm going to finish this. I'm preaching for my grandma and preaching for my mama. Because they had faith that wouldn't quit. God's silence. You've been praying. You've been standing in faith. Mamas and people of God, you've been believing. And God ain't answered. Like I just said, the Spirit of God just brought deliverance to you right there. The reason why he has not answered, because he's trying to test your faith. You know, you can't get swole in the gym unless you have some pressure. See what I'm trying to say? See, some of you, my God, you want everything to happen like Santa Claus, but this ain't how you do this. Yeah, yeah, your faith is exercised and increased through the things you go through. Yes. Your faith is exercised and developed through the things you go through. Right. See what I'm trying to say? God didn't answer this woman because he was touching her faith. Yes. My God. But at the end of the day, because she had her mind made up, see, some things you're going to encounter, some things you're dealing with right now, body of Christ, some things that's vexing you and troubling you in your life right now. Yeah, you listen to me. Some things that's troubling you right now. In your life, it's going to take real faith to get free from. That old patty caking, yeah, yeah. that old playing, reading your Bible and all that when you want to, coming to church when you want to, and being dominated by your life and personal life and sin, just doing everything under the sun and justifying it, my God. It's called lawlessness in the scripture. It's closing the heavens. Many of you are frustrated and broke down because the heavens is closed. You can't just live in sin and think God going to answer your prayers. The only prayer he heard of a sinner, the Bible says, is repent. Turn from and then turn to God. I'm trying to help you. Some of the things, mamas, you believe in for for your children, I'm talking to my own self. You got to do a self-examination to make sure that you're in proper standing so God can answer your prayer. You're praying for your husband, you're praying for your kids, your grandkids, but you got to look at how you're in proper position so God can hear your prayers. What's going on in the dark when ain't nobody else around? We frustrated and burning down because we got too much going on. We out of the will of the Father, but we need God to do everything. My God, your faith will not be defined by what you receive from God, but by what it takes to stop you from getting to God. Let me read that again. Your faith will not be defined by what you receive from God, but by what it takes to stop you from getting to God. Should nothing stop you from getting to God this afternoon? Your faith will be defined by not what you receive, but what you come up against and you don't let stop you. Now you got faith. Now heaven is sitting up, and now Jesus is sitting up now. She, craw she crawling. She's shouting. Who is that down there, Paul? Moses, who is that down there on that earth making a... Jesus. Who, who's that sitting on the side of the road talking about, David, son of mercy, son of David, have mercy on me. Who? Who sitting on the side of the road? Who is that shouting? Somebody got some faith. Somebody got some faith. Somebody got some faith. Who is that down there? Heaven is looking. Heaven is getting. Who? Ooh. Oh my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and my last point. Because of she was willing to do everything that God has said up until this point, the woman receives her prize. But she had to look like a fool to get it. She had to come through religion. Race, jealousy, envy, and whatever else it took. Are y'all with me so far? Yes, sir. So write this down up under point three. 
Jesus responds to the woman of God's faith. I'm here to tell you, as I bring this thing, that need, that situation, the only thing that's going to get heaven to respond is faith. Faith. He was amazed, talking about God. Jesus responded to her faith. He was amazed at the depth of her faith, y'all. Her faith exercised, I mean, exceeded that of the people, watch this church, who had come to, who, who, who he had come to save. Her faith, a Gentile, a woman, according to Jewish culture, was considered a dog, according to the word of God. But she had more faith than the people that Jesus came to save. Get that in your spirit, church. Who was an outsider, my God, that didn't belong according to custom and Jewish tradition, who had more faith than the people that God came to, that he called his chosen people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, that's heavy right there. Ah, mm. Here was the Gentile woman that had more faith than the Jewish scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, and the priests. She had more faith than all the religious leaders of her time. And she was considered, I want y'all to catch this, an outsider. Mm. Just like you and I. Juju, start a church. Mm. Outsider. Some of you are considered outsider. There's people that's all around you that don't believe in you. No matter how much you transform, no matter how much presence and glory is sitting on your life, no matter how far you have been removed from your former life, people will always try to discredit you. Beautiful, Tiffany, but God. I'm going to leave it right there. Right down the second thing, I'm going to get you out of here. He responded to our faith. So the only thing that moves God, for those that got needs today, for those that's desperate, desperate for those that's willing to be persistent, the only, come, thank you, Holy Ghost. I obey God. Only coming, getting up out your seat and coming down here and going through the formality of an altar call, don't move God. That's right. That's right. That don't move God. I love you. That don't move God. All you can come down here and do all this. If you're not coming down here in faith, you might well stay seated, baby. I promise you. Yep, 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 because the only thing that moves God, Patrice, is faith. You come down here and use up all the Kleenex in this campus, and it still ain't going to cause God to move on your situation. The only thing, as I get ready to bring it in to release you, that's going to move God, the only thing that's going to get heaven's attention, the only thing that's going to get your needs met, the only thing that's going to save your children, the only thing that's going to turn your financial problems around is faith. Other than that, you're going through the formality of religious activity. And many of them won't say it, but this one will. He rewarded her faith mm -hmm, by giving her exactly what she asked for. He healed her daughter. I want you to know you're going to have faith for somebody else to get healed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Her faith was so strong, church, that she didn't even ask for proof. But she took Jesus at his word and turned around and went home. Jesus said, your request has been granted. She did an about face and pushed. See, come on, son. She just started asking all kinds of questions. Well, Jesus, how do I know? You sure, man? Well, let, let the disciples, just do a side, turn some bread into wine, and just do, give me something. He said, your request is granted. He, she took him at his word, turned around and pushed. See, some of you, you're vacillating, you oh my God, you're battling with God, you're in a war with God. God already told you he was going to do it. God already showed you what he was going to do, my God, but you're trying to negotiate with a holy God. All you got to do is take God at his word, and it shall be so long as it's done in faith. Mm. I realize that some people in this very room on Mother's Day are looking at a situation and problems that are every bit as hard as this painful Gentile mother was dealing with. Yeah, you're dealing with problems just like she is. I know that many of you have prayed 
and sought God about your situation and things remain the same. I know that some of you are discouraged and defeated and are wondering if there is any use or any help for you. Take heart today. There is hope. Today might be the day when the master responds to your cry. Today might be the day when the master responds to your cry. But see, you have to let your cry be in faith. Yeah, I get it. Let your cry be in faith. Y'all got the revelation. Faith moves heaven. Faith moves Jesus. Faith will cause God to release angels on your behalf. Faith will turn people's heart that's against you. That supervisor don't like your job, faith will cause them to end up loving you. Oh, my God, that man, my God, that don't treat you right, faith. (laughs) Oh, my God, God said the heart of a king is in his hand of the Lord, and God will turn his heart towards you. Faith. Oh, my God, you trying to do it, my God, oh, my God, but it's faith that's going to move the hand of God. Are y'all with me so far? Mm. Today might be the day when you see your mountain move. Today might be the day when peace replaces, my God, all the pain. Peace will replace the pain. The pain of a mother. The pain of a mother going to be with the Lord. I wish mine was her, but I know she's resting very well. I wish my grandmother and my aunties and all them that went on was her. Because they saw this and I didn't. My grandma saw it when she kept praying when I was 16 years old. She even used wisdom. At 16, she took out a burial policy on me, Shemaine, because she knew I was going real hard for the gang life. And she took out a policy on me because she didn't know if I was going to make it, but she still prayed in faith. She prayed in faith. Even though she used wisdom and took out a policy because she wanted to make sure that if something happened to my baby, I want to make sure that at least I can give him a decent, uh, her grandbaby, I can give him a decent burial because I was ten toes in the game, baby. But God, had a grandmother assigned to my life that prayed and stood in faith. Mm. And so therefore, this same man as I come on in huh, for the clothes, huh, oh, that they counted out. When I was in a desperate, dispersed situation, God allowed me to go back to prison the second time. Huh, and somewhere along the line, I had a divine date. I had a divine time that it's time to come in. I'm trying to help y'all. See, 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 you're praying, but it ain't time yet for some. Oh, but I had a d- d- divine appointment and a divine time. Yeah. April the 30th of 1995, God had it all figured out from the beginning of time. Yeah, he running crazy. Yeah, he doing some things. Yeah, he playing Russian roulette with his life. Yeah, he's taking all type of things. But I got him. Because I got a grandma uh, that prayed and stood in faith. <laughs> oh, my God. I was living on her prayers until April the 30th of 1995 at 1.15 in the morning at 6 by 9. Prison cell, my God. Faith met faith. My God, and here I am today, 20-some years later. My God, set free, completely delivered. And God gets all of the glory of my life. So I give God the glory. There's a time. Ecclesiastes 3, there's a time and a place for everything, for every activity under the sun. Keep standing, mamas. Keep standing, brothers, in faith. And you tell God that I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to keep bombarding heaven. I'm going to stay persistent. I'm going to stay determined. I'm going to keep on praying. I ain't going to quit. I ain't going to shut up. I ain't going to break down. I ain't going to walk away. I got my mind heart and my mind fixed and my heart set that I'm going to get what I need because I'm standing in faith. I'm pushing in faith. I'm studying in faith. Oh, my God. Who am I talking to in the church, baby? So as I close, do you need to be saved today? Do you need a mountain moved in your life? Do you need to be restored to real faith and real fellowship with the Father? Do you? You know what your condition is. You know if you died today, you ain't sure. You know what type of life you live outside of the church. Do you need to be restored to proper faith that leads to proper salvation? Mm. Do you need to see God move and moving in someone else's life? Even if you're coming, it might not be about you. It may be on behalf of somebody else. It may be on behalf of your Sharon. It may be on behalf of mamas or your kids. 
the bitterness and the anger and the frustration that we all have because our children don't want to listen. Push past your flesh. Lay down the things that they have done. Don't let the enemy bring back to your remembrance, mamas, even daddies, or the things your kids has done because that will make you stay in your seat. You got to be willing, my God, to respond and move in faith because that's the only thing that he's going to receive this afternoon. Regardless of what your need is today, you can come to Jesus and get it met. Even if you saw him for it in the past and received no answer, today might be your answer. I mean, today might be your day to receive what you need from the Lord today. I thank God for a people of God. Even to those that's on social media, on YouTube Live, that's watching. Whatever your need may be this afternoon, right there where you at, all you got to do is get down on your knees. And when we get ready to say the sinner's prayer, just follow us. And your need can be met today. But I encourage you to respond in faith. Now to those that are still sitting in the audience, what is your need? If you're not in right standing with God and you want to get back in right standing, I'm going to ask that you just come on down. There's many reasons that people are down here. And it ain't because many of them is in sin. Some people are coming on behalf of their loved one. Do you need to come stand for somebody? Are you out of fellowship? Is there a hang up? Is there a habit? Is there a situation that you're dealing with that you need some deliverance from? What is it? Are you in, got involved in a sinful relationship? You ought to be down here. Uh, oh my God, if you're struggling with doubt, if you're struggling with unbelief, you should be down here. Uh, if you're struggling in your marriages, my God, you should be down here. Oh my God, my God. Oh, she can't out of the bullshit now. What do you need today? To all my young men up off of her. My God, you may be struggling with your identity. You may be struggling with being bullied at school. You may be struggling with being, being tempted, my God, to join a game. Whatever it is, young men, please come. And let God save you today. Salvation has come today to 205 South Shirt. Uh, whatever you stand in need of, all the way in the back, I'm talking to you too. Come. Self-esteem, self-confidence, self-image, restoration back to the Father. Oh my God, what do you stand in need of? God is beckoning you to come.